Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, you guys. Welcome back. I pray that you guys are all doing well. Uh, welcome back to the Divinity Life uh, podcast and Divinity Life TV, where we define the difference between religion and kingdom. And I'm so glad to uh, be with you guys tonight. It is Wednesday night, and uh, we are here for another episode of This is Kingdom. And I believe this is going to be a really good one, something that someone that we all need to hear, right? As children of God, as uh, anointed children of God. And so I think that you're going to uh, enjoy. Uh, this this word, I, I prepared it with some special sauce. <laughs> His name is the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and so I pray that you guys uh, had a wonderful day and that you're standing strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God bless you. I want to say welcome to all who will be watching this by way of YouTube, Facebook, and by lis listening by way of podcast. I am not uh, live on IG tonight because, only because I'm trying to preserve my connection, um, trying to preserve my connection because I've been having some trouble with, <clears throat> with the uh, internet uh, connection and all they can tell us is that, well, you know, if there's too many people, you know, on the, on the, uh, the line or so to speak, is that how you put it? I don't know. My mind is not there, but you know, it can, uh, it can become a bit, the signal can become overwhelmed. And I know that there's a lot of people, uh, in our, in our neighborhood here. So I don't know, that could be it, but I pray that you guys are doing well. And, um, <clears throat> We are going to jump into uh, the word here tonight. Uh, the met tonight's, <coughs> excuse me, tonight's message is called "How to Protect Your Anointing." Do not waste your oil. Do not waste your oil. So I think that this is something that's uh, very vital to our spiritual life, our spiritual walk, um, that we all need to hear. <clears throat> the the types of messages, if you notice. Um, that I normally bring are not really your average Sunday message. So it's going to give you a little bit, a little extra scoop on your plate, you know, to help you stand strong. Amen. To help you stand strong and to be well prepared and equipped for what is ahead. Amen. And so that is my job. Uh, so yeah, I just want to, uh, um, uh, invite everyone uh, who may be watching this or catching the replay to like, comment, and share. <laughs> I think by now the, the same few people who watch my, uh, my videos, who watch my messages are probably like, yeah, she never says that. So, but I think you're probably like the same ones keep coming back over and over. So welcome. Hello again. <laughs> I am your sister, Lachelle Dalton Clark, also known as Sister Shelly. And yeah, go ahead and, uh, you know, if you've heard enough already to like this channel, then go ahead and hit the like button on the message uh, on the the little bar down there below the video. <laughs> Go ahead and hit the like button for me. Uh, share and subscribe if you're not subscribed. And that would be great. Um, what is, sorry. Uh, we are going to um, go ahead and get started. And let me get my uh, name here on the screen. I, I, I'm putting my, I, I've been putting my real name, but I'm just going to put Shelly, okay? Because that's really, you know, that's what everybody calls me, Shelly or Sister Shelly. So let's just keep it trill, okay? We're keeping it trill. <laughs> We're going to keep it trill, all the way trill, okay? So that is it. And uh, tonight's message is um, how to protect your anointing. I don't think I'm going to put that on the ticker uh, right now because the banner is there. And I really don't think it's necessary to put it there every time. So I'm not going to put it there tonight. Um, but, you know, whoever clicks on the video, you should be able to see the title there. So I think that just kind of sometimes gets in the way and it's like too much on the screen. So, yeah. So, yes, uh, let's pray. Let me grab some water. And I pray that y'all had a great weekend. Um, I had a great weekend. 
Mother's Day was nice. Um, and I actually released a new project uh, on Mother's Day. Uh, something for all the mothers. That was my Mother's Day gift. <coughs> my Mother's Day gift. Uh, so uh, it's on the website at the bottom of the screen, imdivinity.com. If you go there and you uh, you click on, uh, what is it, services or, well, you can click on uh, motivation and you and then you, you can also click on coaching. But yeah, it's totally different. It's not what you'd expect, you know, from your average um coach or mentor or whatever. It's nothing like that. It is, uh, well, it is something like that, but you're not, you're, you're, you're not paying. <laughs> so that was my gift. <clears throat> and I'm also uh, offering digital media design and consulting since I'm becoming better at this, uh, you know, design, uh, part of like, you know, creating, I, I say the, I'll say the creative part of, uh, social media, you know, becoming, you know, I've, I've learned a lot over the past few years. I've been on social media for, um, since what I started my, my first YouTube channel in 2015. That is my lifestyle channel that, you know, has way more videos than this one. And it's more so for women. And that channel has been re, uh, kind of recalibrate, cali recalibrated, uh, to, to specifically target, uh, women's ministry. So it's divinity, lifestyle, and ministry motivation. And uh, it is uh, helping the women, just something a little bonus, to, you know, over there uh, to go along with the packages that are offered on my website. Um, so if you're needing help in the area of your spiritual life, um, you know, I am here, your sister is here to help you and I'm not going to charge you. Okay. We're not charging you. OK, so um, it is from my heart to yours, from the father's heart to you. Amen. So I want you to be blessed by that. And uh, if you do need help setting up your social media, if you're trying to set up a digital platform, digital ministry, et cetera, then um, my help is available there as well. So you can just go to the website. I am divinity.com. And there's a section there for um digital media design and consulting and all the information is there so all right so you ready let's go let's go let's go uh oh my sister is here came through to give a like sis blessings thank you so much thank you so much for stopping back by god bless you that, that is such such a blessing to see you um I love uh, this. Oh, I love to see new people, you know, new faces. So welcome. Uh, if you came back, then hopefully you heard something you liked, you know, and you're here um, again. <clears throat> whether or not you're here to stay, or you're gonna come back and catch the replay, <clears throat> either or. God bless you and thank you for stopping through, sis. Feel free to help me preach as well. <laughs> um, all right. Y'all can help me preach in the comments. Y'all can help me preach on the replay comments. It doesn't matter. But, you know, if if I if if I poke you enough and you be like, amen, then just throw it right in them comments and throw a scripture in with it, too. OK. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's pray. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a little seem like a little frog in my throat. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to share your word <clears throat> with my brothers and sisters tonight. I thank you, Father God, for the flow, the spirit, the anointing uh, of the prophetic. I thank you, Father God, for the living word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway for the spirit of wisdom and understanding and knowledge and revelation. I thank you, Father God, that comes through your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. We give you glory and we give you honor and praise for every soul that you draw by your spirit tonight. And I'll say, Father God, that uh, even as they are, are, are coming 
uh, to hear this message, message, Lord. Let them hear and understand with clarity and let the word, oh, Father God, be planted in the in uh, fertile soil, the good soil of their hearts, Father God. Let that word not be taken away from them in Jesus' name, but let it grow, let it flourish, let it spring up and bring, bring forth some 30, 60, and 100-fold blessing in their lives, Father God. We thank you and we give you all the glory for your wisdom that you're going to pour out tonight, Father, in Jesus' Jesus name, take over my mouth, hijack my words, let your Holy Spirit do the work in Jesus mighty name. We give you glory and praise, all the glory, all the glory we give to you in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So let's get into this. This is uh, talking about how to protect your anointing. I think it's something we all need to know. And, uh, if you don't know, then you're going to get to know tonight. <laughs> and I, I'm going to give you some tips as well. Uh, we're going to do get into a little, uh, what do they call it? Five points in a poem, which I'd never do. Okay. But I'm going to give you some tips. Okay. We're going to give you some tips that the Lord wanted to share with us tonight. All right. So how to protect your anointing, how to protect your anointing. If you remember last week or the week before, I believe we were, uh, oh gosh, was that two weeks ago? We were talking about, uh, God gave a word for the underdogs and the message was called um, the cost of the oil, the cost of the oil. And the Lord began to minister about uh, the, you know, the reason for the underdog being the underdog, right? Uh, the reason for the suffering in the life of one who was cast aside, one who is marginalized because they refuse to compromise, right? The one who is, you know, <clears throat> not allowed to play in the reindeer games, you know what I mean? Um, but, but, but that one was chosen by God, was called by God, chosen by God, elected by God, right? And anointed by God, anointed by God for service. And, and, and we were, God was helping, uh, helping his people to understand the reason he allows that the reason he allows, uh, you to go through what you're going through and, uh, and to suffer the things that we suffer. Right. And then he began to speak about the woman with the alabaster box, we begin to talk about how, you know, she poured out her oil upon the Lord Jesus and um, <clears throat> broke the, that alabaster box and poured that oil on his head and and how, you know, uh, you know, they they uh, they talked about her. Right. <clears throat> <clears throat> they they was backbiting on her, you know. They was like, "What is she doing here? Is she drunk? Like, wh what is going on with you, boo?" You know. And they and and um, they they only were they were only doing that because they didn't understand <clears throat> number one why she was doing what she was doing. But one thing they did understand, fortunately, was the value of that oil the value of the oil. They just didn't understand the value of her sacrifice to Jesus. Okay. So, so, um, the Lord said that we were going to come back and talk more. Holy spirit said, come back and talk more about this oil. So <clears throat> this is why we're here tonight. He, he wants us to know and to remember for those who don't know that your oil is very costly. Your oil is very costly costly. If you look back over your life, you remember what you had to go through to get that oil, what you had to go through. Now we talked about how the anointing is a uh, part of it is, is, is just, <clears throat> it's just by reason of, uh, just by reason of, uh, you know, natural circumstances or your natural identity. I'm not going to say search circumstances, but your natural identity, there is a natural, there is a divine impartation that is natural that we are born with. Right. And, and, and the anointing that we are born with, but then there is the oil that, that actually cost us something, right? We, we had to be crushed for those, you know, for that oil to be pressed out. You know, we had to be beaten, you know, for that oil, we had to be bruised and battered 
you know, like, uh, like olive oil is really made by the crushing of the olives. So we talked about all of that. And if you don't uh, remember that, then, or if you didn't catch that, I'll put the link to the video in the description box. But he's saying that the oil is so is so costly that we should never waste it and don't give it away to just anyone. Don't give it away to just anyone. <clears throat> don't give it away to just anyone. That means that we need to protect the value of what God has invested in us. What God has invested in you is valuable to him. It should be valuable to you because God is not a waster. He doesn't waste anything. He's, he doesn't waste anything. He's looking for a return on his investment, in fact. So everything that he has imparted into you thus far, he's looking for a return on his investment. That's why, um, you know, tr tr I don't believe the traditional uh, way of doing things where, you know, we're just supposed to come to church and just sit and just come in week out and week in and week out and just sit and just sit and just sit. No, once you have been filled with the Holy Ghost, according to, you know, according to Jesus, he said, wait and stay in Jerusalem until you be and do with powerful on high and then go right and preach this thing. Go and preach this gospel because now you have the living witness inside of you. You can, you can, you can truly testify because he was there from beginning to end. You can truly testify about me, right? And he's saying, go and, and, and preach this gospel into all the world. <clears throat> and so we should not be, the longer you sit, sit on something, you know, that God has invested in you, um, that oil will begin to wane, that oil will begin to, you know, that, that, that thing can become, it, it can become polluted. Yeah. It can become polluted. <clears throat> it can start to stink even, you know, and, 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 and the longer you sit on that thing and you're not using it, if you're not pouring it out, well, number one, God can't multiply what we don't use. He multiplies what is used, what we you see what we uh, engage in, right? He multiplied the fishes and the loaves because they were willing to use it. And, and, and he multiplied it so much to when they were finished eating, they still had, you know, several baskets full left over. So God is a God of multiplication and he does not waste anything, anything. And so, um, he doesn't want us to waste our oil. And that's one reason why Jesus said, don't cast your pearls before swine because they will trample them under their feet and they will keep on trucking. And, you know, some people are just like that. And it's, it's unfortunate. It's, you know, we don't like it, but some people are just like that. So he's saying here, um, don't give it away to just anyone just anyone even jesus himself said to that <clears throat> to that woman that uh uh samaritan woman that came uh for healing for her daughter and he, and she he said it is not it is not meat to give the children's bread to the dogs right so even jesus understood the concept of not wasting what belongs to the children of God, right? The children of God who may not be at the table yet, but they're coming, right? God knows them that are his, whether they're here with us already or not, whether they're already at the table or not, he knows and he's not going to, you know what I mean? So we all have our portion. Uh, let's look at Ezekiel 16 and 15. Ezekiel 16 and 15. I'm in the book tonight. Um, I'm in the King James uh, study Bible. You can get your Bible or grab a notepad. Ezekiel, uh, what I say? 16, Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 15. Let's look at that. Verse 15. Bible study, Wednesday night Bible study. <laughs> it says, it says, now this is talking about um, Jesus, uh, God was talking about how 
he uh how he he's speaking to Jerusalem prophetically right and he's saying that you know I uh, when I passed by you and I saw you polluted in your blood and I said to you uh that was polluted in your blood to live yea I said unto you when you were polluted in your blood live right and then he said I washed you with water I thoroughly washed away all your blood from you and I anointed thee with oil and I anointed thee with oil right so he says, I clothed you with broidered work and shod, your, shod you with badger skin and I decked you with ornaments. I'm just skipping through here. I, 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 I girded you with fine linen and, and I covered you with silk and I decked you with ornaments and I put bracelets on your hands and a chain on your neck and a jewel in your forehead and earrings in your ears and a beautiful crown upon your head. And you were decked with gold and silver. And thy raiment was a fine linen and silk embroidered work or embroidered work, embroidery, beautiful uh, studs woven into the uh, into the fabric of that raiment. He said, thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil. We, you know, you ate the best of the best. I gave you my best and thou was exceeding beautiful and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. So what does the anointing do? What's the, what does that oil do? It causes us to prosper. It causes us to shine. It causes us to shine with the favor of God. Amen. <clears throat> it makes us beautiful. It makes us beautiful. You know, people say that that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? So Everybody might not think we're beautiful, but God thinks we're beautiful, right? And he and he will make even those who don't think you're beautiful to think that you are beautiful, to see you as beautiful. So he said, anyone can look good if they decked out like this. I just tell you that, <laughs> you know. Um, and he said, and 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 thy renown went forth, your influence, your name went forth among the heathen for thy beauty. For it was perfect through my comeliness, which I put upon you, said the Lord God. Verse 15, that word comeliness, in, in case y'all don't know, it means splendor. It means splendor. It means splendor. So, so verse 15, it says, but thou didst trust in thine own beauty and plays the harlot because of thy renown. And that word renown means fame, okay? So like fame, influence, right? And, 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 and poured out your fornication. You poured out your harlotry, your fornication on everyone that passed by. His it was. His it was. His it was. What is God saying here? He's saying, don't take that precious the precious thing that I put upon you, that I placed inside of you, don't take that precious thing, that virtuous thing, right? My oil and just give it away to anyone. When we just give it away to anyone, we're like this, like an adulterous woman who just gives it away to any man that passes by. His it is. This is how we have to think because we have to remember that it is precious. It is precious. It is precious to God. We didn't get it easy. We didn't get it easy. So we shouldn't give it out easy is what the Lord is saying. He says, um, <clears throat> he says, be mindful of where you are pouring your oil and your wine. Be mindful of where you're pouring your oil and your wine and your wine. Uh, let's look here at it, it, uh, Exodus chapter 27, verse 20. I won't be before you long. Exodus chapter 27, verse 20. This is talking about, <coughs> excuse me, the setup of the, the tabernacle. 
uh, the court of the tabernacle. And we're talking about, uh, we're in verse 20 here, the olive oil for the lamp. It says, and thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure oil, olive, pure oil, olive, excuse me, beaten for the light. Now pay attention to the key words here, okay? Beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always. To cause the lamp to burn always. Now watch this. He said, Moses, I want you to command the children of Israel that they bring the that they bring you pure olive oil. Pure olive oil. Beaten for the light. Uh oh. Uh, let's let's back up then. Pure olive oil. What does that mean? Why are you saying pure? Why don't you just say olive oil, Lord? Because olive oil can be contaminated. <laughs> Did you know that it can be uh it can be contaminated? What am I hitting here? It can be contaminated. Olive oil can be contaminated. If there's a pure oil, then guess what? There is an impure oil. Uh-oh. There is an impure oil, right? But this pure oil, it says, was beaten. It was beaten. It was crushed. Why? For the light. <laughs> it was beaten for the light. Ah, only the pure anointing, the scripture is saying, can provide light. It can only the pure anointing can provide real illumination, real revelation that comes from the one true light who is Christ. You see, who is Christ or the Christophany or the anointed one, right? It says, bring you, uh, tell them to bring you pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always, to cause the lamp to burn always. So what does that mean? That means that this is not your fly by night kind of oil. <laughs> this, this kind of oil, it, 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 it gives longevity. This kind of oil last this kind of oil will always burn and, and that word burn there in my study bible it says ascend so 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 in other words it causes the lamp to ascend always always ascending you know like our prayers ascend up like you know uh, like smoke or, or like incense sweet incense before the lord and the bible talks about how the angels gather those prayers they gather that incense and they release it into the earth you see so 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 we're talking about more than just some oil here we're talking about pure oil because it it was it it was crushed to be purified it, it's fresh in other words it hasn't been sitting it hasn't been you know uh it hasn't been contaminated this is the kind of oil that causes the lamp to burn always longevity right so let's look here we, we, you know because some people might say well you know I don't understand that revelation, uh, Sister Shelley. You want to? You think uh, that word "pure" mean, mean that some oil cannot be pure? Uh -huh. Oh well, we see it all the time. We see it all the time. We see it all the time. Oil that is not pure. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. Let me see here. Uh, I'm going to take you to Ecclesiastes chapter ten. Ecclesiastes chapter ten. That's right after the book of Proverbs, for those of you who might be new to this. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. And we're going to look at um, 
verse 1. We're going to look at verse 1. See, real illumination, the, the real illumination, you know, of the spirit of God, it, it, it is pure. God is light. And in him, there is no darkness. No, not at all. He is the sum total of knowledge and wisdom. He is the sum total of truth. There is no lie in him. There is no mixture in there. There's no contamination in there. It is pure. He is pure. In fact, he is the, he, he is the, he is the, the he is the, the, the essence of light. He is the essence of light. He is the essence of all that is. He is the essence of light. You know what that means? Do you know how fast light travels? Let me tell you something about the power of the pure. The power of the pure. There is no segue in that. There's nothing to hinder that thing from moving forward at full speed. There is nothing to, uh, to oppose it. Nothing can oppose it. Nothing can hinder. Nothing can stop it. You see what I mean? See, the devil tries to steal, kill, destroy. He tries to hinder, oppose, distract, you know, terminate. There's no stopping this. You see, you've been anointed by God himself. Masoko Robosa. You have been anointed by God. And there is nothing that can stop that light, that oil, because that, that, that oil is flowing from the purest source there is. He is the very nature and essence of light. You, want, you know, if you want to, if, if people want an explanation, a natural scientific explanation for miracles, there is one. Miracles are miracles that you know seem to come out of nothing into existence at the speed of light why because the word travels at the speed of light the word of faith the word of faith the word of faith when jesus performed miracles his miracles were were, were done in such a way that the thing happened as soon as he said it that soldier said, you know, uh, you don't have to come to my house. Just speak the word. And I know my servant will be healed. And when the man got to his house, the servant was already healed. And he had been healed and was sitting up in his right mind. And he said, when did this, when did all this happen? They said, oh, yesterday about the such and such hour, which was the same hour at the same time that Jesus spoke the word to him. And he said, go thy way, thy servant is healed. Boom, he was healed. The word of Jesus, the word of God, which is the word of faith, it travels at the speed of light. That is the scientific explanation for miracles. That is the scientific explanation for all of the, <laughs> the, the scientists and Scientologists and all of you people, you know, <laughs> who need, a, who need a, an explanation for everything. You say, well, how do you explain miracles? Just like that. Go look up the speed of light. And that's how a miracle happens. Because that's how fast the word works. For when it's coming out of the mouth of someone who believes, who is speaking by the spirit of God. Who is speaking by the spirit of God. Let's look at Ezekiel 10, chapter, one, uh, chapter 10, verse 1. It says, dead flies cause the anointment, excuse me, cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. <laughs> is this clear? Let me know if it's freezing <clears throat> or anything is wrong because I can't see it looks clear on my side. I'm going to read that again. It says dead, dead, uh-oh, dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So doeth a little folly to him that is in repu reputation for wisdom and honor. Now there's a lesson in that. 
He said, it's clear, sis. Thank you so much, sis. Thank you. There's a lesson in that. There's, there's several things there. There's a whole lot of meat in that scripture, right? First of all, dead flies, dead flies. Anything that's not moving, that's not being used, that's not, that's just stagnant, <laughs> you know, slow or slow fall, you know, just hanging around, you know, you know, that, that, that thus goes the saying, an idle mind is the devil's workshop, right? So what does the devil do? He produces dead things, dead things. And when water is just not moving and it's just sitting, you know, it becomes stagnant, it becomes stale and it, be, and it becomes polluted, right? And dead things, you know, <clears throat> uh, you find dead things in there. You find dead mosquitoes and dead flies and you know what I'm saying? So the oil is something like that. It says dead flies. Well, that word flies it, 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 in, in, this, in this study Bible here, it says flies of death. Well, Satan is also known as the Lord of the flies. Lord of the flies, one of his names, one of his um, Latin names, I forgot that Latin name, but it is, it is the Lord of the flies. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm talking about? The Lord of the flies. Let me read this to you. It says, just as one would throw out an entire bottle of perfume because a dead fly, because of a dead fly in it, so people often reject a prominent man because of one mistake or character flaw. So that means that we should, uh, we should flee from the very appearance of evil, right? Because this scripture is referring to a little folly. See, what's causing the anointing to, uh, to stink, the, uh, the anointing... <clears throat> of the apothecary. The word apothecary means perfumer. Perfumer mean, perfume means fragrance, right? And we are to be a sweet smelling fragrance or savor in the nostrils of God. So it's, and also people can smell you. Oh God. <laughs> the Holy Ghost is finna preach. People can smell us y'all. Are we hearing that? People can smell you. See, when we just act anyhow and we, you know, and we, we, we say we're called, you know, by the name of God and we're children of God. Okay. But, but do we not understand that our, you know, behavior, our behavior, our disposition even, you know, and, and we don't have to be stiff as a board 24 seven. No, you know what I'm saying? I laugh and, you know, and, and all of that, you know what I'm saying? I can get, I can get, <clears throat> I can get, uh, crazy and, you know, and play around, but you can do that while still being sober. Yeah. So you don't have to lose your mind. God, y'all gonna make me lose my mind up in here. Y'all don't, we don't got to lose our mind up in here. Right. And, and, and we don't have to uh, we don't have to walk in folly. We don't have to, you know, see folly. That word folly is it, it represents a fool. It represents a fool or someone who is foolish, someone who's never sober. They're just always key, 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 and, key, 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 and always giggling and laughing. And all the time that person is not carrying revelation they're not carrying light they're not carrying you know what i'm saying anything that can satisfy the thirst of men they're not carrying the the anointing that is pure they're not carrying because the scripture said it not me it says so do it <coughs> excuse me uh so do it a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor this is not just for leaders in the church. 
that with that they you know got to be sober and and stiff all the time while you know while everybody else just sit down to eat and rise up to play no you know what i mean you know this is for all of us because jesus was the was the exempt example to all of us and so he wants us to be sober jesus wasn't no goofy goofy silly you know uh preacher come on now <laughs> I was sitting in a uh, in a, uh, a, a a service one time. They had a little program uh, at my church, and they brought in this preacher from somewhere in Africa. Um, I was in I was serving in a Ghanaian church at that time, um, and you know they brought in this 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 preacher, and they they said he was an apostle. You know, so I was expecting, you know, what I'm saying, I mean, every that man was just a a giggling bumbling mess up there you know what i'm saying <laughs> and everything every other sentence literally literally i mean he was jesse duplantis on a whole nother level and i was like lord i'm sitting over there trying to figure this out and then he calls me up to the front always the one that looked like they ain't got they ain't you know with it calls me up there to the front and tries to give me a word to lay hands on me. I did not let him lay hands on me. And the reason I did not was because a little folly to him that in him that is in rep, uh, to him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor, which apostles should have, right? It sends forth a stinking savor. I was like, no, I smell something on you. Something ain't right. You know, uh, I had a flat tire uh, yes, the day before yesterday. And I called my sister to come, you know, help me out. You know what I mean? And um, she came and got me. And uh, I was like, <laughs> I had been cleaning the house all day. I had been, uh, I had been cleaning. I had been uh, working out, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And I was just a sweating out. And, and I was in the sun out there with that car, with that tire. And I was just a sweaty mess. And I had to get into her brand new truck that smelled like it just left the showroom floor. <laughs> I had to get in there like that. And I just kept apologizing. Sis, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I smelled like this, you know? She was like, girl, don't worry about it. But I know she smelled me, okay? And if she watching, she could testify in the comments. Like, girl, <laughs> you know? So what is that saying? That is saying people can people can smell when something ain't right. You look a little too much folly and stuff going on. You know, you're one. It leaves you wondering when does this person sit before the Lord? Are you talking about all this sitting and praying before the when, when are you doing that? Because you're always flipping and flopping and goofing and laughing and when are you ever sober? You know. When are you ever sober? Is it just immaturity or what's what's going on there? Because you're calling yourself this high in the sky and stacking these titles on your name. But you're not walking that thing out. It's dead. That's why it's dead. It's dead. It says to uh, it, it sends a, a foul odor. That is how the pure oil can be contaminated by folly and foolishness. It can be contaminated by sin. Okay, sin contaminates the oil. That's why you know God sent Samuel down there to anoint Saul, and when Saul rebelled against God. He said the sin, he said rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So he told Samuel, he said, go take my oil back. <laughs> go take my oil back. I have rejected him from being king. I have repented in my heart that I ever chose him to be king. See, God, God does change. He changes his mind. He, he will change his mind about you. 
See, when he anoints us, see, when we, okay, so people say that, you know, uh, we got to, you know, well, we know we have to be filled with the Holy Ghost, right? Well, when we're filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is a free gift. He is the gift. And, 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 and God does not, it, it, the scripture says that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. He does not take them back. The gifts and the callings, he doesn't take them back. So, so, you know, he's not going to take his Holy Spirit away from you. And I know David prayed that before. David was like, Lord, please don't take your spirit away from me. Why? Because David wasn't carrying the spirit within him. The spirit of God was with David. It came upon David at times, you know, for war, but it was not, it was not filling David. That didn't happen until after Pentecost. The Holy Ghost was with men and came upon men <clears throat> before, but afterward he filled us, you see. So he doesn't take the Holy Spirit back, but one thing he will take back is his oil. He will take that oil. And you will think that you're still carrying that, that oil that God put on you. But, in, but, but what happened there was a spiritual exchange. A spiritual exchange took place. The Lord removed the oil. And the devil <laughs> placed his oil on you. So you're, you're still anointed. Indeed you are. But not with the oil of God. Because of sin, unrepentant sin. Let me be more specific. Unrepentant sin will do it. Just keep on. He gave, he gave Jezebel a space to repent. Bible says she repented not. And guess what? Guess what? You see, he will change his mind. He'll change his mind. So let's, let's move on here. We, 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 we have to understand uh, God real good. We have to understand him, our father really good. And if you, if you look at yourself, if you study yourself long enough, you'll start to find out who he is. You'll start to figure out how he is because we're created in his image and likeness. And we have a lot of his ways. We don't even know. We have a lot of his ways. Um, uh, let's look here at how to protect this oil, how to protect this oil. I'm going to give you some, some points here. Number one, how to protect the oil around your life. The Lord says, establish boundaries. We have to establish boundaries around our lives. We have to establish boundaries because the oil, God places the oil upon you for service. That is the purpose of the anointing. It is for service. If we look here at Isaiah 60, excuse me, at Isaiah uh, 61, what did Jesus say in Isaiah 61? He said, the spirit of the Lord is a, uh, the spirit of the Lord. God is upon me because he has anointed me to. So there is work attached to that anointing. That's why God anoints us. He anoints us or sends us through suffering or sends us through the wilderness. In other words, right? Jesus went through the wilderness and received the anointing to preach good tidings unto the meek, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. This is serious business. This is why we can't play with God's anointing because it is for functionality. It is for service. It says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. So all of this, 
you, you see, this is the reason why God puts the anointing or the oil upon your life because he wants you to do these things. He wants you to do the same thing that he anointed Jesus to do. So you, you see all of that in there. So, so we, we have to, uh, we have to establish boundaries around our life. This is number one. Um, just like God did when he created the earth, you know, the, the <clears throat> he did not allow the, the oceans or the waters uh, to pass beyond their boundary unless he permits them. You know, sometimes he permits them to pass over their boundary. And that's when you see things like hurricanes and, you know, stuff like that, because he's allowing that water to surpass for judgment's sake. But he says, you are responsible. We are responsible for determining who and what we allow in our life, how they can be positioned or how they can function in our life when they can come and go from our life. We're responsible for determining that. He gave us that, you know, responsibility. Say, well, God, I just wish you would just take this person out of my life. No, you are responsible for that. Get away from that person. If they're causing you harm, if they're taking away your joy, the oil of joy, the oil of joy. J David said he anoints my head with oil. You know, with the he gives me the oil of joy. See, whenever your joy starts leaving, you know, that's a good indicator that a boundary has been moved. When your peace starts seeping out, because of who you're allowing in your life, what you're allowing in there. And you didn't, you didn't establish that boundary. Bible says, if you break down a hedge, a serpent will bite you. So we have to be careful, right? Uh, who and what we allow to come into, to come into close quarters. You see, so we have to establish boundaries around our lives. And even those that we've allowed to come into our lives, when they can come and go, i.e. single ladies, you know, you're dating someone, you know, uh, for the purpose of marriage, you need to set boundaries, you know what I'm saying, as to when that person can come and go, including phone calls. You know, you're not going to be calling me uh, wee hours of the night. Ain't nothing to talk about after, uh, after 10 o'clock. Go to bed. <laughs> I'll talk to you tomorrow. Be a woman of virtue. You know, um, you, you're not going to come to my house. You know what I'm saying? On a, on, a, on a Friday night and just hang out, and, you know, till we, at, till we hours in the morning. No, w you know, we're going to meet in a public place. You're not coming to watch no, no movies over here. Netflix, Hulu, and none of them. Boundaries, boundaries. We have to protect our oil, protect your your virtue, women of God. Women of God. Uh, let's look here at the next one. He said, <clears throat> set divine order and principles. This is what the Lord gave me the notes when I was studying this. So this, I don't preach from other people's notes, y'all. Just, just FYI. Ain't no Sermon Central going on. I, heard, I found out about Sermon Central a couple of years ago. And I was like, what? Pe preachers is doing this? Just going there to find sermon. I don't, and I don't get my messages from other people. And if I do repeat something that someone else said, I always give them the credit on camera. I'm not one of those. Like, I, I'm not gonna, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't see, the, the Bible speaks about prophets who steal, you know, who steal their words, steal words from other prophets and pass it off like it's their own. I'm not one of them. I, I, I'm too scared of God. OK, so these are my notes. What the Lord said was number two. He said, set divine order and principles. Very important. God gave 
order and he gave principles to the children of Israel, to his people. He gave the Ten Commandments, right? Commandments and divine laws, the divine laws of nature, like seed time and harvest and things like that. Um, these this this provide <coughs> provide structure, uh, structure in your life. We need structure, right? Remember, our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and, and God anoints the head. So he anoints the body for service. So it's not just your forehead that's anointed to look at people and, you know, <laughs> no, everything in there is a service. Your eyes are to serve the Lord. Your mouth is to serve the Lord. Your hands are to serve the, everything is to serve the Lord. So he's saying you need structure. Set up divine order and principles in your life. Some of us don't have that or, or we've never thought of that to, to set structure in our life. Right. And principles. Right. A structure can be something as simple as uh, a daily schedule or weekly schedule and, and or or it can be as complicated or as complex as actual, you know, laws, you know what I mean? But God wants us to abide by his laws, you see? So it, 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 he's, ask, he's asking us now, is my law really your standard? Is the law of God our standard? Because it should be. This book of the law, Joshua 1 and 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, right? That you may observe to do according to all that is written therein, then we will make our way prosperous and then we will have good success. So you see, the law of God gives us divine order and structure principles to live by. We live by the word. This is what keeps us grounded and, and this is what keeps us balanced, right? So that none of our steps shall slide. What's that scripture um, God, uh, in Psalm? Uh, uh, <clears throat> David said, you know, I have, um, I have kept my, I have kept thy law within my heart that none of my steps shall slide. I think God said that to him actually. <laughs> You know, he has kept my law within his heart. Therefore, none of his steps shall slide. So, so it keeps us balanced. So we're not sliding and, and you know, and slipping and sliding and we fall down, we get up. No, it helps you to stay up, helps you to stay up. Right. So that's, that's, that's what, that's what he wants us to do. And another thing he said about those boundaries, he said that, Remember that no one will respect your boundaries if you don't. They will learn from you what what you establish in your life. People will learn how to treat you by the boundaries that you set. Right. So we have to remember that we teach people how we how we want them to treat us. OK, uh, the next one, number three, protect your temple and keep it holy. Protect your temple and keep it holy. A good watchman can see himself better than anyone else. I'm scared of people who, who always seeing what's wrong with everybody else, but can never see what's wrong with their self. And you know what that means? That means that that person is not a repentant person. That person does not take spiritual baths. Because you just sitting up stinking and you don't know you stinking. See, when I was in the car with my sister, I knew that I was stinking and I knew why, <laughs> you know, I knew, you know, but you know what I'm saying? This is a person that does not take spiritual baths <clears throat> and you ever been around a person that's stinking, stinking and they can't, they can't smell they self. Have you ever been around someone who stink and they can't smell themselves? It's, it's, it's. You know, it, it's it's a paradox. You're like, really? Like, what's wrong? Is something wrong with your nose? Because this thing is strong. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so it is a, uh, it is a, um, a sign that the person does not take spiritual baths. 
So he's saying, um, you know, you should be able to see yourself first and you should be able to see yourself better than anyone else. A good, a good watchman can. Why, why do you need to do that? So that you can protect your temple and keep it clean, keep it holy. Because what is coming in and out of your doors and your gates, you need to know what's coming in and out of your doors and your gates. Lift up your head, oh ye gates, right? What's coming in and out of those gates? What's coming in and out of those doors? Entrances into your temple, entrances, you know, there's even windows, <laughs> you know. Your thoughts be hanging all out of there. <laughs> and we think people don't know what we're thinking. Well, we can tell what you're thinking. Um, you know, but but the gates, the eye gates, the ear gates, the the you know, the doors of your lips, you know, and things like that, especially the lips, especially your mouth. Because the Bible talks about <laughs> how the mouth, how the tongue is so unruly. You know, it's look, it's like that little helm in a ship that turns the whole ship, but it's just a little bitty helm. So he's saying, especially our mouth, we need to keep the doors of our lips. Make sure, you know, evil communication corrupts good manners. And, and it's not just who we are communicating with. It is what's coming out of our mouth as well that corrupts good manners. We don't want to corrupt anyone else either. There's a thought. So spiritual security is needed. Spiritual security. We need some spiritual security guards. <laughs> you know, a defense city is not a city without walls. Watch this. A defense city is not a city without walls. <laughs> you know? A defense city is a city with walls and gates and doors, and it and it and they are secure. They are defense, they are defensed or fenced in or defended. Right? So where are our where are your guards? Where are your watchmen? Where are your uh, angels? Where are where is your wise counsel? Ministering angels, wise counsel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wise counsel. We need to keep wise counsel around our life. People who can give us wise counsel, people who can give us sound advice, sound that comes from sound doctrines, you know, that comes from the Bible, not their opinion. Right. So. Wise counsel we should establish around our lives. Pr protecting what? The anointing. <clears throat> the anointing is in the body, in the temple. So we need to protect the temple and keep it holy. Uh, we need God, uh, like David said, we need God to keep the doors of our lips. We should pray that God will keep the doors, help us to keep the doors of our lips. <clears throat> And when we do speak, there's a scripture in Ecclesiastes that says, the words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness, and the end of his talk is mischievous madness. It also says, a fool is also is full of words. They talk too much. A man cannot tell what shall be and what shall be after him. Who can tell him? Who can tell him? So, you know, the, this is the wrong way <laughs> to use your words. Um, you don't want to be a babbler. Some people just sit up and just talk, 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 and they just babble on and on and on and on about really nothing, really, you know, nothing, nothing helpful, nothing, nothing educated, educational, nothing that is going to, you know what I'm saying, add value, nothing, 
Nothing. You just swinging small talk and you just never stop making the small talk. No, that's the problem. So, so, um, I'm trying to think of the scripture where the, where the Lord talks about, uh, wholesome words. It's in Proverbs, wholesome words. You know, the words of our mouth should be wholesome words, wholesome, right? Anoint my lips of clay. Put your words in my mouth, O Lord. Season my speech with grace and salt, O God. This is one of my prayers. I always pray. You know, put the law of kindness in my tongue. And grant me to speak wholesome words, words that will edify, words that will strengthen, words that will that will educate and bring enlightenment and understanding to others. You know, words that will shine light on the knowledge of God. On the truth of God. So we have to be mindful of that. Because the anointing flows out of what? It's going to flow out of your mouth. It's going to flow out of your mouth. You can lay hands and the anointing will flow. And you don't have to say anything really. But since God operates through the power of words, miracles operate through the power of words. I never saw a time in the Bible where Jesus just, and it was done. <laughs> no, he spoke and it was. He spoke and it was. So, so you know, this we're, we're not uh yogis and 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 over here. You know what I'm saying? Um, the next one is preserve your temple. Now, the last one was what? Protect your temple. This one is preserve your temple. Now, this is talking about the actual physical body. The Lord is saying, self-care and maintenance. Self-care and maintenance. Of both the outer and the inner man. Self-care and maintenance of both the outer and the inner man. Take care of your body for longevity and endurance sake. Take care of your body for longevity and endurance sake. So the anointing can continue to flow. Well, if you if, if you die early, the anointing can't flow through there, <laughs> you know. I mean, it can still work if they, you know, they threw a dead, they threw a dead man on Elijah's bones and the man came back to life. <laughs> so Elijah was anointed to the bone, baby, you know, so it can work. But, you know, it's not wise for us to wait on something like that. Right. So take care of your body uh, for longevity, uh, for endurance sake. And he says, protect your soul and your spirit from harmful allergens. Thought this is quite interesting when the Holy Ghost said this. Protect your soul and your spirit from harmful allergens. <laughs> Woo, allergens. So, you know, like allergies, you know how they affect us naturally in this season, especially, right? Now, I'm going through a little bit of it right now. Allergens. So, you know, these things are harmful to the system. These are bacteria and things that are harm. It's harmful to our system. The state of your health affects your peace and your peace is paramount. The anointing does not flow. Uh, the, the anointing does not flow steadily from a vessel that is not at peace. If, you're, if your life is in, is in disarray and confusion all the time and it's always something going on, that's one indicator that something is wrong here. Something is wrong right here. You know, because ain't that, ain't that much happening to nobody that's not saying much, you know, about, you know, but we call things into our lives. You know, we th that kind of stuff, we call it into our lives because we're, we're talking too much. And, we're, and what we're saying is not wholesome. It, it is not bringing good into our lives. It's not, it's not bringing life, right? Life and death is in the power of the tongue, but it's bringing something else. Death, chaos, confusion. And so the anointing can't flow through a life of confusion 
when your life needs to be at peace. You need a peaceful mindset, a peaceful life. And if your life is full of too much activity or too many things, listen, it is totally okay to say, hey, I made a mistake. I missed it. I missed it. I missed the mark. Uh, I, I got to get some of this stuff off the boat. Something has to get off the boat because I have too much going on and it's taking my peace. It's taking my peace. It's taking my joy. And I cannot function. I cannot work like that. I can't work like that, right? It's okay to know, you know, yourself and know, you know, it, it, you know, how much you can take on, you know? And, and if you if you need to let something go, just just let it go. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. Um, so so there's that. Number seven, excuse me, number uh where are we? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Number five, and then I have one more after this. Uh, he says to cleanse and purge daily. Cleanse and purge daily. Sincere repentance. That's all he's saying. Sincere repentance. Cleanse, cleansing our heart out daily. Uh, sincere repentance will take you far. It will take you far. David uh, wept before God because he was truly sorry for his sins. And, and, be, and, and the result of that was a change of behavior, right? And we've talked about that before here. So we're talking about how uh, sincere repentance, uh, you know, being truly sorry for our sin. If we do sin, if we just repenting just to be taking a daily bath, we don't know if we sinned or not. We, uh, or, or excuse me, we don't know how we sinned, right? Because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory. And, and you know, we can't open our mouth really <laughs> without without sinning in some kind of way. Unless we, you know, unless we're just at that level where everything we speak is the word of God, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if we just tell the truth, you know, sometimes, you know, we just saying stuff. And then you might say something and be like, that wasn't faith. You know what I mean? Oh, Lord, I'm so tired of this, you know, or whatever, murmuring and complaining, stuff like that, you know? So you just never know. But But God is saying, Take your bath, just like you bathe every day in the natural, bathe in the spirit and uh, repent from the heart, This from the heart, because this is where, um, this is uh, where our uh, godly sorrow, it flows from a heart of godly reverence and fear. See, it is godly sorrow that leads us to repent. And that flows out of godly reverence and fear. That means that we respect God so much and we love him so much that we, we, we don't want to, to uh, carry sin in our life. We don't want to, you know, to live an unrepentant life. I don't want to live an unrepentant day, you know. So this is where, you know, this is why he's saying Sincere repentance. Just keep your keep yourself clean. Keep your heart clean. Keep your heart clean. Uh, that leads me into the last one. Uh, number six is stay broken before the Lord. Don't allow the enemy to harden your heart. Don't allow the enemy to harden your heart. I know it's not easy when people are saying things and doing things beyond your control. But he's saying, don't allow the enemy to harden your heart because the anointing flows from the heart. It flows from that place, the heart. Guard your heart. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life, the issues of life, the issues of life. So, you know, we have to learn to, you know, just stay broken before the Lord. And that just means in a place, in a posture of humility and meekness, you know, never to stand up and, 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 you know, in that spirit of, I know, I know, I know, and I know, you know, and I know everything and get staunch in that pride, you know, that means that the foot of pride has taken you. He's saying, stay broken, 
just stay low. Just stay low, right? And don't allow the enemy to harden your heart. I, I, I was talking to one of my sisters the other day and I was talking about, uh, we were talking about that, uh, this particular scripture, um, keeping your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. And I was telling her that, you know, we have to be careful when we are in environments um, where, you know, uh, when we are in toxic environments um, that we, we really don't have control over because um, that's, that can get into your, get into your heart, get into your spirit and, and cause you to become septic. Um, because especially if you're already dealing with trying to let go of things or trying to, uh, uh, a, a, trying to let God heal your heart from some things, right? You're trying to uh, forgive and move on, or you're trying to, you know, uh, you're praying for to God for healing, and then, but you're but you're going, you know, back into a an atmosphere where you don't know what's going to be thrown at you. Really, you know, what I'm saying it's, you know, um, it's not good because. When you're still, you know, if if you are there, you need to definitely be make make sure that you are guarding your heart because whatever gets in there, whatever the enemy, you know, throws at you, if you're not guarded, that thing is going to get in there and it's going to take you long a lot longer to heal, where you know for your healing process because, um, you know, there's a such term, a uh, medical term called septic, where that thing can just you know what I'm saying? Just erupt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can just get so mad at something. You're like, now look. You know what I mean? Now you done it. And then th there you go. You know what I mean? So septic. And then you got to work. When you get through, you got to go home and work through all of that with the Lord. And so he's saying, no, guard your heart. It's going to save you a lot of work, you know, in the end as well. Your anointing flows out of that heart. Uh, so he's saying, where is our brokenness? Where is the, where is our brokenness? We see a lot of people, you know, walking around all staunch, all whore, you whore, you whore, you know, a whore, like we used to do a Chris show, you know, we, you whore, you know what I'm saying? Crip, you know, <laughs> you know, but God is saying, where, what happened to your brokenness? Where is your brokenness? Where's your brokenness? God is nigh unto them that are of a broken spirit and a contrite heart. That's where we always find the Lord. That's where we always find the presence of God at its strongest is when, when we are broken before the Lord. And he's saying, when was the last time you wept before God? When was the last time that you wept or saw someone cry or shed a tear, even when they were preaching the gospel, even when they were preaching, I, I, I feel it coming right now. <laughs> Even when they were preaching about Jesus, even when they were preaching the gospel of Jesus and, and, and a tear started to fall, tears started to flow because it's flowing out of the heart. Who is displaying the heart of God in this generation? Who is displaying the heart of God? Mi robo shoto robo sa. Head knowledge is one thing. It's wonderful. It's great. But who is displaying the heart of God for his people? Who is displaying his heart? Who's tuning into his heart? Who's tuning in, who's preaching out of his heart with tears because you don't want to see lives lost, you know? You don't want to see, you know, you don't want to see your brothers and sisters fall away. You don't want to see not one more brother, not one more sister fall away. And you're crying out and you're travailing in prayer. See, when we pray, we don't really cry no more. 
You know, there, there, there is no, there's no travail. There's no groan. Everybody want to, you know, be a warrior. Ha, 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 ha. You know what I mean? Just, you know, just in, <laughs> and that's wonderful. You know what I mean? You, you a bad lax, you bad, go ahead. You know, I can get down like that. But I'm talking about what is most effective even beyond that is the travail when a soul travails for another soul in intercession. You see, when you cry out of your heart for another soul or another nation, that's what God is looking for. When you preach my word with passion and conviction, that's what God is talking about. That's what he's talking about. So he's saying, where are the men of compassion, the men and women of compassion? Everybody's about their motive and their agenda and their money and their platforms and paychecks and all that. What about the sons of consolation? That's where the anointing is. The anointing is what breaks and destroys the yoke. It is the love of God flowing out of your heart for another human being. It is, the, it is the consoling or the consolation of the Holy Ghost when somebody can literally feel the Lord wrapping himself around them through your words. You can open your mouth and release the love of God in such a way upon somebody that they just start weeping. They just start weeping because the Lord is speaking to their heart. Telling you. See, it's, it's things, it's like I told you before, it's not always what you see. Look at what you don't see. See, it's, a, it's more about what we're not seeing sometimes because that's how we know where to fill in the gap and that's how we know what's needed in the body to make it function better it's not that we're being negative no we're looking for ways to improve this thing for maximum you see what i mean maximum longevity maximum fulfillment you see Maximum functionality, maximum endurance for the body of Christ. So, so he's saying, where are the sons of consolation? Where are the good Samaritans? Why is the church so hardened these days? You know, why are we so dry? Why are we so dry? Why are we so dry? Where is the oil flowing? Everybody got to put up a front and a facade. You know, we care too much about what people think about us. Why can't I just be me? Why can't you just be you? Because God only anoints the authentic, original you. Not a knockoff version. So he's saying, why are we so dry? The only thing hard about us should be our armor. <laughs> Put on the whole armor of God. <laughs> and even in that, you find humility. Yeah. Shot in our feet with the gospel uh, of peace. Humility. Girding up our loins with the spirit of truth. Humility, putting on the breastplate of righteousness. That means, you know, bless your enemies and don't curse them. Humility, righteousness. Doing it God's way, not our way. Righteousness, humility as a breastplate. The helmet of salvation, humility, because we didn't save ourselves. Only Jesus. Only Jesus was able to save us. Humility. 
sword of the spirit, living word, shield of faith. You know what takes out demons? Humility, love, truth, meekness, humility, brokenness. You can't do anything against the truth. And you can't do anything against a broken man because I'm already broken. I'm already broken. I'm already dead. You can't kill me no more. <laughs> I'm already dead. What more can you do to me? Really? You see, humility, humility, getting low. So he said, the only thing hard about us should be our armor. Huh? And that's a, that is a, uh, what do you call those things? A, um, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, he's saying that we 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 want to learn to um, stay broken before the Lord. Stay broken before the Lord. That's what the Lord is saying. Stay broken before me. These are ways to protect our anointing, to protect uh, our our oil, our virtue. Protect our heart because the oil flows out of the heart. And don't just give it, you know, give that uh, to anyone, you know, um, be mindful where you're pouring it, where you're pouring it out. You know, if people, if you can already sense and perceive that people are not receiving you. Jesus said, shake the dust off your feet and move on. Just move on. Just move on. You know, the Holy Ghost will let you know. As many as are led by the spirit of God, we are the sons of God. And in leading us, it is his job to let us know when your oil will be wasted here. And listen to what they're saying. They're not receiving it. Move on. Just move on. So that's all I have for you tonight. Uh, I pray that uh, this word was a blessing and that it helped you. Um, you know, we just have to use wisdom and we just have to, uh, you know, stay humble, stay humble, because that is where the oil really flows out of a heart of humility. And I know sometimes we just want to, you know, because we on that devil's head and all that kind of stuff, you know, and that is necessary. But there is a time and a season for everything. There's a time and a season for everything, for everything. And I'll tell you what. The best way to defeat the enemy is for him to never, for you to never let him see you coming. He thinks you're coming one way, you come the other way. Jesus said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. You see what I'm saying? So, word of wisdom uh, from the Lord tonight. I, I pray that uh, uh, it's something that you can apply to your life. And uh, I'm going to pray and get you out of here. We're a bit early tonight. Thank God. Hallelujah. <laughs> we're not going no two hours. So we're going to uh, pray and let you go. So Father, I just thank you for uh, the word that you released tonight, Lord. I know it was a blessing to me. I learned plenty uh, through uh, you speaking tonight, Father, and I pray, Lord, that it brought uh, knowledge and, and understanding uh, open the eyes of the uh, of the understanding, <laughs> excuse me, of my brothers and sisters uh, that will listen, that will hear this message tonight. Uh, in Jesus' name, Father, I pray, Lord, that you will bless them, that you will keep them, that you will make your face to shine upon them, that you will cause your oil to rest upon them, that you will anoint their heads with fresh oil and prepare a table before them in the presence of their enemies. In Jesus' mighty name, anoint them with the oil of gladness, Father. Don't let them walk sad. Don't let them be sad. Don't let them be sad. Don't let them be sad. Anoint them with the oil of gladness. Give them the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness and the oil of joy for the spirit of mourning. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, Father God, the freshness of your spirit rest upon your people. And I pray, Lord, that your strength is made perfect in every area of their weakness. And I pray, Father God, that, you're, that you're, you would stir up 
the rivers of living water that you placed in them, Lord, because they believe as your scripture has said, Father, as many as believed, oh, Father God, to them, you gave power to become the sons of God, Lord, empower them, oh God, equip them, refresh them, renew them, rejuvenate, revive them, Lord, in the midst of the years, awaken that which was sleeping in Jesus' mighty name. Let that which is dead come to life in Jesus' name. Let the dead, let the dry bones get up and live in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father God. Anoint those bones with oil. New bones. Oil in the joints. Oil in the bones, in the ankle bones. In the name of Jesus, divine healing right now. Divine healing right now. Be healed and be made whole in the name of Jesus. That's for somebody. Be healed and be made whole in the name of Jesus. The healing balm of Gilead is flowing to you now. In Jesus' mighty name, strengthen the ankle bones, O Lord. Strengthen the, the joints, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Fresh oil in those joints. Let it flow, let it flow. The healing balm, the healing oil, let it flow tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Signs, wonders, and miracles follow them that believe. In Jesus' name, let it be so tonight. Healing for your people. Deliverance for your people. Life and life more abundantly. A brand new day, a brand new season is upon you. A time of awakening. Awaken, O sleeping bride. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. The glory of God is risen upon you. Even now, in Jesus' name, bless them for their heart of humility. Bless them, Father God, for lending their ear to hear what your spirit is saying. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. I love you. And I will see you next time uh, on Friday for another episode of Kingdom Conversations. May have a guest or two, hopefully, maybe. So, uh, join me here Friday night and you'll be in for a treat. Amen. So uh, like, comment, share with someone who needs it and uh, I will see you soon. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.